Thank you all for coming here, Dick. So nice to be back home after possibly my longest time out of the country ever in my life. And, uh, I'm so happy to be back. There's no feeling as like coming back to your own home country. Uh, so, you know, Alice could claim to have good countries out there, but uh, for me and for all of us, when you get out there, you will know what it is to miss home. Missing the environment you have, missing the, uh, the local food, and missing everything else that goes with our country. So it's so nice to be back, uh, back home. I just want to appreciate the Honorable John Russo for his leadership in my absence, uh, as well as all the ministers and all the members of parliament. Uh, amidst many challenges that we go through, nonetheless, the fact that we keep our heads above waters is very important. And I want to uh, sincerely thank the Deputy Prime Minister, who acted as Prime Minister in the 24 days that I've been out of the country. Uh, and all the ministers that have been at work, as well as all the members of Parliament and all our agencies of state, I do acknowledge our Chief Secretary, as well as uh, our, some of our senior public service leaders who are here. Thank you, media, for coming out big. Hopefully you could, uh, uh, you could get a, a small conversation here out uh, today. Uh, most of what I will say here has been already said from wherever we walk. In fact, the last 24 days, uh, possibly is unprecedented. <coughs> unprecedented in a couple of fronts. We lost uh, the longest serving monarch on the face of planet Earth, uh, who was the head of our country in as far as uh, her, our, our affinity to the common world is concerned. And in my uh, travel to UK, to give respect to her, the same moment, uh, I was able on behalf of our country and all our people to be given an opportunity to pay our courtesy call to the king as he ascended or assumed his, his uh, role as the king of the realm, the commonwealth, and the king of the United Kingdom. So my visit there was, uh, uh, we had to follow a program that was preset. A uh, program that was preset. Uh, in, some, in case some of you do not know, one of the first brief I received when I became Prime Minister on May 30th was a brief, a confidential brief that was entitled London Bridge. London Bridge, and that gave us, uh, gave me at the time, an uh, indication of a 10 day uh, period in UK if the Queen uh, would have died and now that she's dead. All Commonwealth nations and especially the Royal Nations. So, required by law and decorum that we travel and have a moment uh, of respect through the entire 10 days of proceeding. So on behalf of the country I did pay my respect to the Queen that passed and the King that ascended. The King conveyed his uh, well wishes to every one of us. Uh, he had quite a strong memory of our country, the impression that he received in the four times he visited us including the earliest or the first visit, sometimes in 1966. Uh, I don't know whether some of you were alive by then, certainly I was not alive in 1966. <laughs> uh, he did convey uh, his well wishes to the people of, he mentioned Dogura, so he must have visited Dogura in Millen Bay, and he did mention uh, the northern province. So he conveyed his well wishes to our people there. He said he spent a month and he did indicate he maintained friendship with one gentleman from the area. And so whoever the gentleman is, uh, he has a fine memory of his month there. And on behalf of each and every one of us, I did convey our invitations uh, for him to be with us 50 years from the second time he was with us. In 1975, on behalf of Her Majesty, uh, the Queen, uh, then Prince Charles was the chief guest as the Australian flag was lowered and our flag was hosted for the first time. So I said, well, 2025 would be 50 years since you were in Papua New Guinea for the uh, second time. Uh, can you be our chief guest? He made mention he need to polish his pigeon uh, mm -hmm. and he will see uh, if schedule and his health would allow him to travel. He's a, uh, a man of advanced age himself, 73 going 70 and onwards. Uh, he did make mention that uh, he would look in his program and schedule 
but he would need to have polished up on his uh, pigeon. Uh, that was a, a visit, in my view, uh, a visit that not just for us in respect to our affinity to the Commonwealth, but more importantly, the Commonwealth of Nations brings Papua New Guinea connectivity to not just UK, but also to the Commonwealth of Nations. As we were in the entire proceeding, uh, in the order of uh, protocol, uh, other nations who were not in the realm and in the Commonwealth were ushered in early to programs. For instance, the United States President, French President, and others who were not in the Commonwealth were ushered in much earlier. Uh, Papua New Guinea uh, was in the 14 nations was that was given prominence in the order of sitting, prominence in the order of arrival, uh, and prominence in the in the order of order of uh, being guest to. Uh, the royal family or the, uh, or the king in this instance. So, uh, whilst having access to the monarch in, as our head of state is important, but more importantly, the connectivity to the Commonwealth family of nations. Uh, as a country, we cannot be isolated. Having affiliations to a family of nations is important. Just, not just for rapport, but more importantly, in the special focus with this government and our generation of leaders are uh, emphasizing on connectivity to nations, whether the bilateral or multilateral, those connectivities must be geared towards us also gaining and those nations connected to us gaining in a mutual shared uh, relationship. For Papua New Guinea, our affinity to the Commonwealth gives us uh, better and priority express lane access not just to the Commonwealth, but also to the uh, headquarters of the Commonwealth, that is the United Kingdom and, and, and Great Britain. Uh, we have not utilized our existing relationship with the United Kingdom. I realize, for instance, there are no military <coughs> attachments with uh, Fiji and other, uh, other Commonwealth militaries. Papua New Guinea, uh, the, the Papua New Guinea uh, Defense Force was not being utilized in those uh, connections that is already being established as part of our our relationship to the uh, uh, Commonwealth and the United Kingdom. I did make connection with the British Prime Minister as well as uh, the Great Britain government. <coughs> and some of those public servant to public servant exchanges, our government to government exchange, our business to business exchange. But in this instance, our military possibility of military attachments with uh, the military in, in Great Britain would be strengthened. Uh, some of you would have seen a Fijian soldier who was also used as part of the uh, soldiers carrying the body of Her Majesty through the, fun, through the final moments. Well, that is an evidence that those opportunities are there. Our defense minister and our team will get to work on this. Now, the visit also, in UK, enabled me to make connect with connection with uh, business houses who uh, have interest in finding business opportunities in our country, as well as having engagement with one or two businesses who are already uh, in you know, in business here in our country. Especially by meeting with the Swai Group companies, uh, you would all know Swai has a presence in our country since. 1908, uh, through the sipping, what used to be early, early called the steep ship sipping, uh, that still exists today. It's, it's uh, in, a, in a greater way uh, subsidiary of the swine uh, companies. I had a meeting with them. So, a trip to uh, Great Britain in respect of the Queen was uh, very well noted. I had a personal audience with the King himself for 17 minutes. All of us were given a lot of 10 minutes each or so. Uh, the king was gracious to not only make a call to me uh, in our embassy mission in, on Friday, apologizing that we will not meet on the 16th. Uh, and we did meet on the, uh, on the uh, 18th, as uh, we are in state by His Majesty the King, our head of our state. After this one, I uh, went to the United Nations and the United Nations, uh, you all would have had our conversation at the United Nations, but something interesting, I think the, the 
Secretary General uh, did indicate uh, emerging or pressing problem and emerging problem. There will be food shortages uh, in the world going forward. It is now uh, uh, also a threat, just like climate change is a threat, shortage of food has emerged as a threat uh, on planet Earth. And some of you would have heard my uh, statement, in part of my statement. I said Papua New Guinea has enough landmass to assist in the food production, not just to uh, supply our domestic food needs, but more importantly, prepare for export of food elsewhere. Consistent with the way we have structured our government, uh, putting up, uh, breaking up our agricultural portfolio into uh, four different uh, ministerial allocations. Uh, those were deliberate actions we took, uh, not knowing that the conversation on food security globally would emerge as one of those dominant conversations at, at United Nations. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in this front, but engagement with the United Nations still continues. Papua New Guinea also has the benefit of being up close uh, with the Pacific Island leaders in our, in our exchanges with the uh, United Nations General Sec uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary General Rada. He had a session with us. We had uh, the entire uh, 14 nations from the Pacific. Uh, we had conversations geared towards the climate change as an existential threat to all of us and in the Pacific uh, nations being small island states on planet Earth, Papua New Guinea was clustered or uh, is clustered in the Pacific Island of nations. Uh, we have our own challenges in the climate change. We did, I did make representation to us at, at, at those concerns. But more importantly, we introduced our line of thought uh, in forest conservation. Uh, that line of thought uh, also is said by two global leaders, Prince, uh, now King Charles Rada. Uh, he, in our exchanges, did made commitment that he will mobilize his network of global networks to support us in the endeavor to conserve and preserve our rainforest. Uh, and when we met at the United Nations headquarters, I did make mention of the need to preserve our forest, but must come at a, a, a price to us. Someone must pay for those conservations. Uh, United Nations Secretary General uh, did, took note. Our conversation went simply this. You just cannot talk about climate change uh, without talking about forest conservation. There needs to be a balance. There's the emergence of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane and other pollutants on one side. That is warming planet Earth. needs to be balanced by uh, continued production, uh, continued availability of oxygen. Trees produce oxygen. The natural equilibrium on planet Earth is balanced by oxygen presence in suppressing what could have been a carbon and pollutant increase. So that conversation became big. The United Nations also took note of the fact that our forest needs to be conserved, something that uh, we here as a government must work towards to achieve that conservation at a premium price to our country, to our landowners, to our forest people living in the forest areas. Uh, United Nations conversation went very well. Uh, let me just also impress that the same concern was said in two occasions. I had the privilege to meet the United, Nations, uh, United States pre uh, President. Uh, the first meeting with him, the moment I arrived for United uh, Nations meeting, he did make indication. Uh, I think he was well briefed that your forest needs to be uh, needs to be assisted to be conserved. Uh, I just thought I had to appreciate on record as I arrived back home that three big global leaders, uh, King Charles III, uh, General, uh, General Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, uh, Antonio Guterres, as well as President of the United States. President Joe Biden had similar response to our forest and our, our, our promotion that our forest needs to be concept but at a premium price for our country and for the forest areas. Uh, they all said that our forest needs to be concept and hopefully through those conversations we are able to mobilize a family of uh, sponsors who will work towards preserving and conserving our forest uh, for not just our immediate 
uh, economic gains, but more importantly for the sustenance of our children, the future and the planet. Of course, most of you would have known uh, that I have returned to Australia uh, on, on uh, last week, Sunday. Uh, I was not just watching football. Uh, football was very terrible. Our team were not properly prepared. Uh, uh, the other side, life is not just rugby league. Some Australians were asking me, what about our football result? I said, I'm not here for football. I'm here for something far greater than football. And that is the uh, continue, continued engagements at the bilateral level with the Australian Prime Minister. Uh, of course, you would know the current Labour government uh, is also in support of the work that was started three years ago as we start to bring Papua New Guinea and Australia much closer. Uh, we want to go beyond the closeness we have had thus far and as far as status quo relations are concerned and migrate towards a greater trade, economic and commercial relationship and people to people, public service to public service and, and education and employment opportunities for our people. Uh, let me place a record, the Australian government, as we had with the previous <coughs> Labour gov uh, Liberal government, the present Labour government and the Prime Minister Al Albanese uh, acknowledged Papua New Guinea as the closest relations, relationship and we look forward to, uh, it is confirmed, that he will visit Papua New Guinea in the second week of December. Uh, there will be a PNG Australian Ministerial Forum uh, in November in Canberra. Uh, the Prime Minister will then visit us. And in those arrangements, we will firm up some concrete exchanges. More importantly, our students going there to study in Australia to assist us in some of these space needs we have in our country as well as Papua New Guineans finding employment in Australia to fill in some of the employment uh, space uh, employment needs Australia may have in the future, but start off with the basic labor and mobility exchanges to migrate towards filling and supporting skilled uh, skill labor uh, being exported into Australia to work. Uh, that is something that our government will work with their government. And that will mean we have a look into our present education sector training and preparation so that we ramp up our labor supply to supply our own market as well as export the excess uh, others to, to Australia. After the Australian uh, meeting, I was, because of time limitations, Sunday, uh, Australia, Monday, we need to be in Japan to attend to the uh, Japanese uh, former Prime Minister's funeral. I had to jump on board with the Australian plane and we had a quick shuttle across Monday to Japan uh, and Tuesday I was given privilege on behalf of every one of us again to uh, before the funeral service at 2 o'clock the <coughs> Prime Minister, uh, Japanese Prime Minister, Prime Minister uh, Yoshida was able to give me uh, a moment Half past eight, I went into his office. We had a very good bilateral. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Kasida basically indicated the need for uh, Japan and Papua New Guinea to have continued good relationship. Uh, we've had good relationships for many, many years. And the fact that out of 191 countries that were in attendance, we were amongst the only few uh, possibly and there are 10 nations that he had the bilateral exchange before the funeral uh, at 2 o'clock. Our slot to meet him was at 8.30. We were 8.30 to 9 o'clock. I sat and had a meeting with him, a bilateral. In those meetings, again, the conversation to Papua New Guinea, Japan relations were entrenched, but in a elevated to the uh, trade and economic relationship, uh, he did confirm there's an energy uh, need in Japan that is growing, and he asked for our LNG uh, producers in our country to be supplied to Japan, as well as uh, his continued willingness for Japan to buy more of our producers, especially our agricultural produce. And those was uh, that emerged very strongly in a bilateral <coughs> meeting. Uh, we set an appointment for further bilateral meetings, him coming here and me going to Japan. Uh, all of us know Japan is the third biggest economy anyway. Uh, 
so that meeting went very well. We went into the finals of uh, late Shinzo Abe. Uh, as we were entering in, you would see some of Shinzo Abe's uh, contact in his life as uh, the longest uh, pri prime minister of Japan. Uh, there were strong uh, pictures of his visit to Papua New Guinea also being played but as display. Uh, that was quite quite nice to uh, be uh, the pictures that depicted Shinzo Abe's life, so uh, his close bond and, and uh, relationship to uh, Papua New Guinea. There was one or two of his visit to Wiwek, uh, and Governor Baird was with me. He felt quite a uh, quite, uh, strong attachment to the leader that passed, but of course for us, in very, very recent time, one of his final work before he exceeded as Prime Minister in 2020 was to approve a 280 million kina soft loan to support our government. Never before Japan has given support to a government uh, directly. Uh, we were able to receive that in 2021. That is a soft, one of the softest uh, loan ever secured. It is a uh, 280 million kina a dollar of 0.01% interest with a five-year grace period, meaning we start to repay in uh, 2028 going forward. So uh, we had to make uh, pay respect to a leader who has great affinity to our country. In his time as Prime Minister, he did visit Papua New Guinea twice. So my going there was not just a case of visit, but entrancing Papua New Guinea-Japan relationship at, at, at a level that has strong emotional bonding and attachment on a leader at a person-to-person -person level as well as country-to-country -country level. Japan, a nation with a lot of opportunity for us to continue on uh, benefiting from, especially in our focus to export finished product. And we did encourage Japanese companies to come in with the technology and with the capacity to partner our business houses here in our country. And the Honorable uh, Richard Maru, was with us as our Minister for International Trade, and he would take lead in those spaces, and I introduce him to the Japanese Prime Minister and the Japanese leadership. There was no rest for me. Right after the funeral, uh, that afternoon, I had to go straight to the airport. So uh, three days in a row, uh, overnighting in three countries, I had to go back to the airport, because our meeting with the United States Pri uh, President was immediately the next day. And uh, I hopped on, onto the plane uh, that afternoon after the funeral at 5 o'clock. Uh, that was the longest Tuesday ever because I had to cross the uh, two time zones. Uh, the Tuesday I went on, arrived at Tuesday afternoon uh, at around 5 o'clock again. So almost uh, by time, time, time zone uh, conversion, it was almost like a 24 hour travel straight across to Washington. We had fruitful series of meetings. Uh, the meeting with the United States was the highest ever unprecedented meeting, not just with the Pacific Island leaders, but I don't think there was ever a White House and the United States officials did confirm. There was never a regional bloc meeting like this held by uh, any United States government, giving respect to a regional bloc of uh, nations. Uh, Pacific Island nations <coughs> received this rare privilege. In fact, uh, President Biden gave us this privilege to have a one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion with all the issues that we're facing, uh, with, uh, we face in Pacific Island, uh, not just the climate change issue, but other issues as well. They also open up other facilities available for us to have access to, grant as well as aid combinations, as well as soft lending combinations. Uh, for us if our nations would need help. And Papua New Guinea came out very strong. I uh, did inform him that uh, and, uh, United States leadership, including Secretary Lincoln, that we will not only be talking about aids and grants, but we're looking at US companies coming in here, staying here, partnering us as we work to ramp up our own production of our local producers or export back to market also. And the United States is the biggest economy, biggest market. We look forward to the uh, United States uh, being a place of more of exchange of uh, uh, trade, business, and commerce. Uh, 
uh, those who acknowledge and uh, President Biden uh, was able to also receive me at the White House and we had deep conversation in those regards. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the country is blessed by the last two weeks or so of engagements with international uh, leaders. Uh, the contact with UK, contact with US, contact with Japan, contact with Australia is a contact with 35% of world's GDP. These four nations have control over 35% of the world's GDP. And uh, these are nations that we already have a deep relationship with at the bilateral. Uh, at my level, as the present leader of our country, in my contact with the <coughs> leadership of those nations, we are able to consolidate our bilateral relationship but more geared towards us ramping up our production and then receiving our, our, our whatever we produce. And I think now onus is now on us as uh, government to put our money where our mouth is and to put our program to action, ramp up coffee production, ramp up cacao production, copra production, uh, livestock production, uh, fisheries production, uh, and not just focus on oil and gas and mining. Uh, because it is now confirmed the world is getting hungrier. Papua New Guinea can be producing food to feed ourselves as well as, as well as supply to those connections that we've made. And uh, I am pleased to announce that those connections are positive for our nation. We stand to gain from this going forward. Uh, mind you, they can live and they've been living without buying produces from us in, in a wholesome way or big way. Uh, it is us who need those relationships, not them. They could, sub they could survive without Papua New Guinea. I'm correct. Huh? They could survive without Papua New Guinea, but we need those connectivities so that whatever we start to produce here, export it to them, uh, can, be, can be bought in those markets. And for us to bring back those uh, uh, dollars converted to China to grow economy. So I think my, uh, my connections with them, was well, it had a house cry element, well, it had a, had a public service of, uh, element to it in the United Nations and uh, moving around, but deep inside, my travel to these four nations will gear towards uh, ensuring that we establish markets and establish connections at the top. Uh, in that, the establishment market will grow and uh, the person-to-person, business-to-business -person, uh, -business, uh, connections can be uh, increased going forward. Uh, I also forgot to mention the United States have had our views clearly on the issue of also creating space for students and possible visa, we look at visa arrangements for easy flow of Papua New Guinea students to find employment, just like Australia's reception to these two issues on education and employment, uh, not just on business and commerce, but education and employment opportunities are also opening in United States, so these are things that we will progress in both UK, Australia, and USA going forward. Education and employment also. Uh, good, good, good news for us. I just want to say thank you for all of you coming by. Uh, the prepared press release is here to be released uh, uh, by uh, Madam and my team here. But <coughs> those for the rounds that I visited, I, it was quite tiring. It wasn't easy traveling between different time zones, but. Someone's got to do it for all of us, and I did it. And more importantly, those of you at home, you will hold the fort together. I think now with those connections made, uh, us as government must get to work on what we need to do to ensure we produce our products, train our uh, youths to go and work in those markets, and ensure that the bilateral that we've established uh, bears food for our country. All right, sorry to my Smith talk a lot, but it was a long travel, so I think I'm uh, Thank you.